All right, welcome in to another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here, and we are ready to rock and roll, and we are in Psalm 18 today, and so we we got no time to dilly dally, so we're just gonna get right to the text because we got a lot of verses today. Um, I think we're gonna try to read every single verse. Um, but uh, like I said, it's quite a few verses, so we're just we're gonna power through, and we're gonna see what happens, and hopefully, hopefully you're encouraged and strengthened uh, by us spending time in the text together. Hope you enjoy it. So here we go. Uh, first, there's uh, this is actually the longest introduction, most detailed introduction of any psalm in the entire book of Psalms. And so, uh, for the choir director of the servant of the Lord, David, who spoke the words of his song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from the grasp of all his enemies and from the power of Saul. So, Second uh, Samuel, about chapter 22, is going to be like the historical account of the basic time of David's life where this came out of. And so if you are interested, you can go check that out um, just kind of for further study. Um, So here we go. Uh, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, where I seek refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I was saved from my enemies. I just love the humility here. Uh, David was quite the warrior. Uh, David had a ton of personal um, like skills, abilities, talents, and even teammates, and lots of people on his side fighting with him, fighting for him. And yet his testimony was, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my rock, my deliverer where I seek refuge again, kind of going back to what we talked about the last couple of days about taking refuge in the Lord, about seeking him, about going after him and not just, not just expecting God to meet us where we are in the midst of our mess, though, obviously God does that a lot. And, um, and did that here for David, as it continues in verse four, the ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me pretty dark situation overall. Right. Um, I called to the Lord in my distress. I cried to my God for help from his temple. He heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. I just was so, that was really stuck out to me today as I was reading through. I was like, man, we serve a great God. The God of the universe that created heaven and earth. So, you know, we're so tiny and small. And yet I cried to my God for help. And from his temple, he heard my voice. So cool, so encouraging. Like r- journal about that today a little bit. How, you know, who who are we that God is mindful of us? And yet He heard my voice. My cry reached His ears. Verse seven. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of the mountains trembled. And they shook because He burned with anger. Smoke rolls rose from His nostrils, and consuming fire came from His mouth. Coals were set ablaze by it. He bent the heavens and came down, total darkness beneath his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He made made darkness his hiding place, dark storm clouds his canopy around him. From the radiance of his presence, his cloud swept onward with hail and blazing coals. The Lord thunders from heaven. The Most High made his voice heard. I don't know. I just... I like that description of God because it's so big, strong, and powerful. Um, he shot his arrows and scattered them. He hurled lightning bolts and routed them. I mean, you know, when you got somebody on your side uh, that can straight up just throw thunderbolt, uh, throw lightning bolts, yeah, that's wow. Okay, so the depths of the sea became visible. The foundations of the world were exposed. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of your of the breath of your nostrils, so, you know, when somebody can um, just, you know, like the, the blast of the breath from their nostrils can wipe you out. Um, yeah. Wow. Watch out. 
Um, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He pulled me out of deep water. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. I don't know. I just, those verses really stuck out to me today too. Um, reached down from on high and took a hold, took hold of me and pulled me out of my deep water. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. I mean, oh, gosh. And then this verse, man. I They confronted me in the day of my calamity. Isn't that exactly like, isn't that exactly like the enemy? Um, to come after you, not when you're doing good, to try to take you off your high horse, you know, whatever. But to confront you in your day of calamity, to kick you while you're down. Um, be, and so I was actually journaling about that a little bit this morning, just how, yeah, the enemy does kind of try to come after me in my day of calamity. And that when things are going wrong, when things are challenging, things are rough, that's when the enemy comes to really try to take you down to a whole nother level, right? Like, Oh, you're down. Let's go. You know, I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, you know, Satan does it's just like when, um, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, uh, Jesus succeeded in resisting all the temptations. And this is the, the enemy. Satan went away waiting for a more opportune time, looking for an opportune moment. And, and that's what the enemy is doing in our lives is looking for an opportune moment to come after us. And so if we can be aware of that and be aware of his devices, that we're not ignorant of his devices, of his tactics, then we can game plan and be prepared and uh, succeed against the enemy because the Lord is our support. Come on. He brought me out to a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Mm. <sighs> Guys, there's just so much good news. So much good news in the text. He rescued me because he delighted in me. I mean, just let that <laughs> let that make the tears flow today that you know, God, oh, he delights in you. Like, come on. Wow. Um, I think the next few verses are really powerful because, again, i um, just talking about the, the blessing, the benefit of obedience, um, righteous living. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, and he repaid me according to the cleanness of my hands. For I kept the ways of the Lord and have not turned from my God to wickedness. And I have not, yeah have not turned from my God to wickedness. Indeed, I let all his ordinances guide me, have not disregarded his statutes. I was blameless toward him and kept myself from my iniquity. So the Lord repaid me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. And again, this isn't talking about like uh, overall blamelessness, but just um, insofar as what he is responsible for in his day-to-day behavior. He's not saying that I don't need a savior. I don't need redemption from my sin, but he's saying obedience and following after God and doing what he's told, you know, kind of a thing because Deuteronomy 28 um, definitely uh, laid out the stipulations of the covenant, you know, Hey, if you obey, if you follow me, here are the blessing. Like you have in front of you blessing and cursing uh, life and death, choose life, choose blessing, choose life, choose blessing. And, and yes, we are a people under grace. We're not under the law, you know, but we are a covenant people still. And though we, we serve the same God, the same God that made that covenant in, in Deuteronomy 28 and laid out all those stipulations. And so we would be a little bit silly not to pay attention to that and to really aim our hearts towards holiness, towards righteousness, towards obedience to what he would have us to do. Um, because Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And so all of those principles, all those things that God wanted us to be doing, he still wants us to be doing. Um, our righteousness is locked up and, and secure in Jesus, right? So we don't have to worry about that part, but this reward for righteousness is a real thing. With the faithful, you prove yourself faithful. The blameless, you prove yourself blameless. With the pure, you prove yourself pure. And the crooked, you prove yourself shrewd. For you rescue an oppressed people, but you humble those with haughty eyes. And actually, I was thinking that both of these things are acts of grace and mercy. 
um, rescuing oppressed people because that's what they need. And then humbling haughty eye, people with haughty eyes because that's what they need. Given like God's so good to come. Like it, it sounds almost like this, you know, and to some extent, maybe it is a little bit, uh, a little bit of judgment coming to them, but, um, you know, how much better is it that God would come and humble you if you need it rather than just letting you continue on being haughty and crazy and stuff, you know? And so Lord, you light my lamp. God, my God illuminates my darkness with you. I can attack a barricade and with my God, I can leap over a wall. All right. God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is pure. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God beside the Lord and who is a rock? Only our God. He clothes me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer, sets my feet, sets me securely on the heights. He trains my hands for war. My arms can send a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand upholds me and your humility exalts me. You make a spacious place beneath me for my steps and my ankles do not give way. Man, if you've ever rolled an ankle, <laughs> that's a nice promise right there. <laughs> I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I do not turn back until they are wiped out. I crush them and they cannot get up and they fall beneath my feet. You've clothed me with strength for battle. You subdue my adversaries beneath me. You have made my enemies retreat before me. I annihilate those who hate me. They cry for help, but there's no one to save when, save them. They cry to the Lord, but he does not answer them. I pulverize them like dust before the wind. I trample them like mud in the streets. You have freed me from the feuds among the people. You have appointed me the head of nations. A people I had not known uh, serve me. Foreigners submit to me, cringing as soon as they hear they obey me. Foreigners lose heart and come trembling from their fortifications. So that's just him uh, talking about his time being a king over an entire kingdom and just some of the dynamics that played out because of God's faithfulness to rescue his people. Um, and then, then verse 46 through 50 is the conclusion. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. The God of my salvation is exalted. God, he grants me vengeance and subdues people under me. And I, I think that one, again, is just so critical to remember that vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord, that we don't have to, we don't have the, we don't have the capacity to do it well. We are not meant to be the judges of peoples, you know, as far as like eternal judgment and that kind of thing. But God grants me vengeance. He is a God of justice. He can make justice happen. He will make justice happen. He frees me from my enemies. You exalt me above my adversaries. You rescue me from violent men. Therefore, I will give thanks to you among the nations, Lord. I will sing praises about your name. Man, make that your make that your goal today to give thanks among the nations and sing praises about his name because he gives great victories to his king. He shows loyalty to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Amen. Wow, that was a lot. Uh, great job powering through with me. Um, again, so many good verses in here to be encouraged by. Um, he rescues and oppressed people and humbles those with haughty eyes. His way is perfect. The words of the Lord are pure. Um, he, uh, man, so good. And let's choose to be people of righteousness. Let's choose to be people that have not turned from our God to wickedness. And, uh, and just... Uh, Again, I think just going back to the verses one through three, we started there. We'll finish there. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock where I seek refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I was saved from my enemies. God bless you. Have an amazing day today. And I will see you tomorrow.